All right, well, we'll just kick it off then and get going. So uh, um, for the people who don't know you, uh, a lot of us right. do know you because, you know, you grew up basically. Uh, the reason I know you is because you were so nice to my kids and uh, helped my son Mac with basketball when you were a little yeah. badass back in the day. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, so tell everybody what you're into now. All right. Well, right now I'm the director of strength and conditioning for men's basketball at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Awesome. So uh, I know that you have, uh, let's see, let's back it up a little bit. Played yeah. college basketball at Berea, right? Yeah. So after high school, I was lucky enough to earn a scholarship to play college basketball at Berea College, small little D2 school in Kentucky. A lot of fun. I mean, I took it as an opportunity for education purposes, not so much on the athletic side, um, unlike some of my teammates. <laughs> but I kind of knew that you know the professional level was not going to happen for me. I knew that from an early age. But um, I took full advantage of my education in Berea, and Berea was gave me gave me the opportunity to perform a lot of internships, and they'd actually pay for me to go do internships, which was super cool. Mm. So my first experience in strength and conditioning was at Wake Forest University, awesome. where I learned under Ethan Reeve. Ethan Reeves is an amazing, amazing man. I mean, he's internationally renowned, old, real old school, old school wrestler, but he's all into density training. He's, he's, he's a very smart man. Um, I wish I knew who I was talking to at the time when I was there. Oh. Um, unfortunately, I was too young and naive to actually know the extent of the person I was talking to, but and I'm, I'm hoping to get back and meet up with him real soon. Um, but after that, after I finished my stint in Berea, I was lucky enough to – have a, um, a couple of opportunities with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill men's basketball. Um, luckily, I was able to help them prepare for their season when they won the championship in 2009. Awesome. Uh, that was my first experience in college basketball as a coach, not a player. Um, and once again, I worked as an assistant. I, my mentor, I owe everything to this man, um, to where I'm at today especially. Uh, his name is Jonas Serration, one of the smartest individuals I've ever met. But after that, uh, I got my master's at Campbell University, where I was an assistant strength and conditioning coach working with six intercollegiate teams. Um, that was a tall order, um, something I do not uh, aspire to go to again. Uh, my goal after that was to be with one team. You know, that was, that was my goal, to have a one team. And that's luckily what I have here at Alabama. Um, but after Campbell... Went to Colorado Springs, very short time. Oh, what would you think of Colorado Springs? I've actually had the opportunity to go out there one time when Taylor made uh, nationals in gymnastics. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love Colorado Springs. Denver is a very cool city. Um, luckily, I was there uh, with the Olympic Training Center. Oh, yeah. we I, I toured that place. It's really awesome. Oh, it's it's incredible. So I was I was only there for a short amount of time. I was working with the combative and acrobative athletes for oh, the cool. 2012 games. Um but then I got a call out to go to California, which, I mean, you know, being from the South, it seems kind of like a dream, you know? Right. And so I went to the Bay Area, and I was at Santa Clara University as a director of strength and conditioning for the entire collegiate uh, or athletics. So uh, when I was there, though, I only worked men's and women's basketball. Um, once again, it was my own gym. Got to run the show. Absolutely loved it. Um, but it was, it was easy to come to Alabama, um, especially because I got to have that more – individualized attention with just 13 athletes. I travel with them. I do all their nutrition. I do supplementation, uh, active recovery, modalities. I mean, it's it's a lot more than just picking up weights and putting down weights. Right. Uh, so these guys that are coming in uh, to school to play basketball, uh, yeah. freshmen uh, coming in, do they have any idea what they're getting into? Um, they generally have no clue, uh, especially with me. Right. Um, I'm a... Uh, I, want, I mean, every strength coach thinks they're doing something different, but in reality, we're all doing what's kind of under the same umbrella. It's just what our point of emphasis is. Um, what's happening now is, and I'm part of this generation as well, is that individuals don't play multiple sports growing up. Right. And so what's happening is you get really good basketball players, but you get terrible athletes. Mm. And so, the, and some of the ones that skid through are unbelievable athletes who are really raw at basketball. So, you know, it's, it's really different when you have a mixture of 13 kids like that. So, On the basketball ahead. side, would you, would you rather see a kid come in who's a phenomenal athlete and could use a little help in the developmental side of basketball, or would you rather see somebody come in that's an amazing basketball player that you could help build up? Well, I'll tell it to you like this. Um, it depends on what the coach wants. Cause ah. 
once again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm supplement to him. Right. And for me, I like the freak athletes, mainly because they get to do all the cool shit, right? They get right. to lift the weights, they move it fast, I mean, get your juices flowing, right? Right. But at the end of the day, who puts the ball in the hole? <laughs> I mean, and so each has their own challenges. Each of them I like a lot. Um, mainly with the freak athletes, you get to do a little bit more experimentation. You get to do some more advanced levels. Um, with the individuals who seem to be better at basketball players and athletes, you know, it's about putting the wheels on the car, keeping them there. You right. know, it's about making sure that they can perform. And so you have to get down to exactly how they move as an individual, not like a cookie cutter. This is how a basketball player should move. It's not about that. It's about how that individual moves. So, you know, I got to find ways to make sure that they can stay injury free. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about them playing the game for an entire year without having to sit beside me because they're injured. Now, do you do you see a lot of kids come in in a red shirt to build up the first year, or do you guys you guys get a lot that are going to hit the floor and start playing right away? That's a great question. It, sent, it depends on the coaching staff. Once again, at Santa Clara, you know, we weren't afraid to red shirt a kid. We weren't. You know, um, I had an unbelievable athlete. I'll just leave the name out. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about it, right. but um, he was an unbelievable athlete. He has a pedigree like you wouldn't believe. Father played in the NFL. Is Older brother played Division One football. I mean, the kid just was an iron mind, right? So he already had a great pedigree coming in. But, you know, a little raw with the basketball side. Plus, he wouldn't have seen a lot of minutes anyways because there's a lot of seniors in front of him. Right. So some coaches will build him up for an entire year, and they still got four more years of eligibility of hooping, right? Um, at Alabama, I haven't seen that yet. You know, down here in Birmingham, you know, we get <laughs> we get some freaks. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Like, we, we got some unbelievable guys that can go. Um, at Santa Clara is more of a private school, so mm -hmm. educational standards were a lot higher. Mm -hmm. um, down here at Birmingham, we have a lot of JUCO transfers. Right. And I don't know if a lot of people understand the world of JUCO or junior college basketball, but there are some phenomenal athletes there. Tell me about it. Mac, Mac played it's, JUCO. My son played JUCO um, oh, the last two years. And uh -huh. I swear to you, he could have went and played at some of the small colleges around our neck of the woods and had a much easier time of it than he did playing JUCO. Um, oh, they man. went and played in yeah, a, um, a JUCO versus like uh, up-and-coming high school kids that are going Division One right out of high school. And oh, yeah, that was unbelievable. It was in yeah. Greensboro. Yeah, yeah, and you know I got a lot of respect for the JUCO athletes too. I mean they're they're coming down a hard road, and yeah. it's usually, I mean you're 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 just keeping your fingers crossed and hoping for the best. Yeah, you know? I, we, I, my opinion of JUCO that I got to see was you had a lot of kids that had it athletically but didn't have it academically. Now. Uh, my son and a couple of the other ones that are from this area, it was a little mm -hmm. bit backwards. Um, they right. they had more of the academics but had less because we just didn't face the competition that you needed to face on a regular basis. And yeah, that's not, where people don't understand stuff district. like AAU has got, you know, plays such a huge part. If you want to play Division One basketball, you have About got to be in a upper level AAU program or it just it's not you're not gonna happen. Especially it's, on the West Coast, it was all about AAU. All, and that's all I remember the coaches talking about is what AU does the kid play for? You yeah. don't hear, you know, where I'm from, when I, we grew up in Carroll County. I mean, I thought it was only high school basketball. That's what got you to college. Right. I got into the coaching. Uh, it's not about that at all. It's all about AAU and the AAU coaches. And it's, a, it's a lot of politics. <laughs> it, it is a lot of politics. And one of, one of the benefits to a coach, in my opinion, is would you rather be able to go to a tournament where you could see four or five recruits at one time, or would you rather go to a high school and watch one kid? You know, right. it, it just right. you know makes more sense for them. But it, it makes a lot more sense. What 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 part of your uh, career? Did, or let me step back. Where do you think you picked up the idea that you wanted to be in strength and conditioning and be a coach? How what part of your uh, collegiate career? That's that's a good point. It actually, I believe, goes before my collegiate career. Okay. Um, well, I know I used to see you in the wellness center all the time. Yeah, like you I put the hours in, in, even in high school. So many kids don't do that I, nowadays. Yeah, I loved it. And you know who got me in there uh, is actually before the Wellness Center was built. You remember the Nautilus on Main Street? I do, yes. My mom is the one who got me involved. I was like ah. seventh grade. My mom got me into training, um, believe it or not. A lot of strength coaches won't say that. <laughs> but it was uh, Candy who got me into strength and conditioning and – you know, from there, you know, I love the aesthetic side. You know, of course, most strength coaches come up that way or meatheads like me. You know, it's all about bodybuilding and getting big, big, big. 
Um, but then it became more about the performance side. Uh, I remember my first book when I was a junior in high school. I forgot the name of it, but it was a 52-week program. It was supposedly what North Carolina was doing at the time. I mm-hmm. uh, forgot who the string coach was then, but I followed it to a T for, for an entire year. And, you know, felt like I was in the best shape of my life and ready to go. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, when I got to college, you know, to me, I didn't know you could make money doing that. <laughs> You know, like, so I went the physical therapy route my first semester. And then when I went to my first clinical, I was, uh, I can't work with older people. (laughs) I mean, I just couldn't do it. You know, to me, my passion wasn't about getting someone's quality of life better. My passion was getting athletes to perform at a higher level. That's awesome. And so I found out that, you know, you can get paid and do that. I was (laughs) all about it. All about it. That's awesome. Now, so like 10 years down the line, what do you, what do you want to see yourself doing? You know, to be honest with you, I'm I'm so happy with the coaching staff I'm here. I'm with right now. I'm with Jared Haas. He was, I mean, he's an unbelievable human being. And you know, I if I'm beside him for the next ten years, I would not be upset at that <laughs> at all. The goal is obviously to win a national championship and a shit ton of conference championships. There you go. But you know, I wouldn't mind getting back into the Olympic setting. Uh. You know, I really enjoyed working with world class athletes. Um, but, but, you know, I'm really happy in my collegiate setting. I got 13 guys. You know, I know them up and down. It's a very personal, intimate relationship, and I wouldn't have it any other way. That's awesome. Well, outside of your work life, since, you know, basically you're training all these people all the time, so people, all your friends hit you up, don't they, all the time, wanting uh-huh. to know, how can I lose 20 pounds for the reunion, Corey? How right. can I get rid of this beer gut? You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, they want it all for free. You know? Yes, so they want it for free, and they want to know how to do it within the next three days, right? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, I remember one time I asked you um, uh, how we could put, was it like 20 pounds on Mac in the span yeah. of three months, and you just looked at me and laughed. <laughs> like, I mean, there's this, there's a thing called a it – ha- it comes in a syringe. And <laughs> I, that can help, but, um, you know, I wish it was that easy. If it was that easy, I wouldn't have a job. Yeah, you know? it's it's a lot of work, obviously, and uh, and I'm glad there are people out there like you who can help these uh, kids do it. But uh, we'll cut this off for today. But if you'd like, I'd love to have you back sometime and uh, talk some there. more about uh, fitness. Uh, I, I might actually hit you up for some free advice. No, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but man, well, I really appreciate it. 